So, has anybody been to Arby's recently? The return is near. July 1st, 2024. No, this is not talking about potato cakes. And when you look this up on Reddit 14 days ago, you see people commenting, can't wait for the potato cakes, all this stuff. This guy actually gets it. You are all missing the whole entire point. Literally, it's the Illuminati, all-seeing eye, with the exception of the Latin part, but includes the Roman numerals. With that being said, they're adding at on the end is near, which is propaganda, manipulation, or the truth. Anyways, everyone on this post is only caring about some sort of food item. Guys, this is the end time curse that goes forth of the face of the whole earth. Zechariah chapter 5. An angel asked Zechariah, what is this that you see? And this is an ephah. This is an ephah. This is an ephah. This is why the heliocentric globe Earth theory debunks itself. It simply doesn't work under any circumstances. According to this theoretical model, it takes the moon about 27.3 days to orbit the Earth. So can any of you die hard globe Earth believers explain? How is the moon visible in the night sky side of Earth when the moon is on the bright sun side of Earth? Because according to your model, the moon should not be visible at the high night sky for almost 14 days every month for the people experiencing night at the equator. And the most hilarious thing about this is that all you globe Earth believers are laughing at the truth seekers and flat earthers when their model actually fixes this problem. So, unless you can fix this problem on your model, the heliocentric globe Earth theory will be debunked. You can conclude this point by saying that you've accepted that it was based on an assumption. Is that is, do, you, do you still maintain that position? Well, uh, it's the standard model. of. The Sorry, model. the standard model has no scientific backing. It is an assumption, correct? Well, it's the standard model. Sorry, the standard model has no scientific evidence. You only assume a value of R. Correct, Mick? For crying out loud, man. So people are really triggered when you question the source that they use to validate everything and to verify everything, um, the source of all knowledge. If you question what that source says, um, the Oracle Google, if you question anything that comes back from there or someone that's deemed an expert in the field and gets paid to, to do something in that field, if you go against anything or question anything, you're uneducated, you're dumb, what you just can't read, like why can't you just follow right? Why can't you just follow what it says and believe what it says? And then there's guys doing it for a living. These are experts. And this is the Google um, explanation. Like, what is your problem? People are so bothered by that. And they'll call you every name and try to make you feel any way because you don't go along with what they consider to be the the the, the know-it-all the end all of all knowing is an expert in the field or who made a listing or who made a thing or published an article or wrote it in a book and google whatever google spits back that is the end all if you question it you are just insane uneducated and you what the hell are you talking about um, and just get in line, like stop. Why can't you just accept the answer? So people, a lot of people like to say that, oh, you know, um, you're, it's okay to question things, but then you got to accept the answer. It's like, no, I'm questioning where you're getting the answer from. I'm literally questioning the source of all of our knowledge. So yeah, if I'm breaking new ground and that's bugging you out, and I'm thinking of things that you haven't thought of or that um, Google has already debunked. Someone else thought of it and Google has already had a response to that. So I'm just an idiot for not listening and just not accepting the answer that you have given me or that Google has given me. That is like literally that's that's being crabs in a bucket, man. You can't even you someone reaches for a new thought questions something goes in a little bit of a different direction and says hey man i see bullshit here no oh, you how could you do that that's not bullshit read the article and just accept the answer it's not bullshit 
Like, dude, you're just a crab in a bucket. You're just reaching up and pulling the other person down. Because why? Because it's a different thought. Because it's not doesn't go with the source that you have validated everything on. Um, it doesn't go along with someone who claims and has um, titles and has accreditations on the wall. It doesn't go along with them. They all disagree in every field. There's people on opposite ends of agreeing on everything. So they're experts to a degree, to very specific things. But they're not experts at thinking. They're not any um, extra special at logic and just senses, their eyes and their ears and understanding things. So when you stand on a Google search and you stand next to some expert, like, oh, oh yeah, you're just, you know, you have no idea what you're talking about. You're just, I guess you're a scientist. I guess you're this. I guess. It's like, dude, you've already discounted yourself as anything but just a follower because if that's your source and that's what you need to understand things, then go right ahead. And I do the research. You do research to fill in gaps in your knowledge, questions about certain things. If experiments were done, you can't know of every experiment and the result. So you do research to fill in the gaps. You don't do research to get the big picture and for someone to tell you how everything works. Oh, this is how it works from start to finish. This is it. There's no guess. This is the only way. You don't do research like that and just take what someone else has put together. You do research to fill in the gaps in your knowledge and then you sit with it. You sit with it and you think and you think about it for days, for days and you question things and then you do some research to fill in the gap. And then you sit with that for days and you think and you think about it. It's about being alone with your thoughts. And that's how you come up with things and put things together. You do research to fill in the gaps as far as specific knowledge about things. So don't tell me that you're doing research and you're just coming up with the entire answer and the explanation in quotes from a scientist and that's your research that's not that's not research that's, not, that's like finding finding good quotes and finding other people's other the, the culmination and the results of their research and then you're presenting it as your research that's not research have a good day Watch this astrophysicist making stuff up to confuse his listeners. It's all in their imagination. Nothing that he is saying is real. This next question comes from Twitter user Aku, who asks, any estimations on how old these discovered exoplanets are? Yeah, the age of the star and the system itself is poorly constrained. We know it's not very young. It doesn't show signs of youngness. So it's at least... Uh, half a billion years old. But we can't say more because these ultra cool stars, they evolve super slowly. Their lifetime is 1,000 times larger than for a sun-like stars. So we don't see them evolving. So we can't constrain their ages. All right, this next question comes from Facebook Live here. What is the distance between these three planets? Is it something like 500,000 kilometers? And what is the distance between E and the star? Oh. Uh, the distance uh, between the planets are a few times the distance between the Earth and the Moon. So we're talking about uh, something like a thousand, well, millions of kilometers and not hundreds of millions of kilometers for uh, an Earth around a Sun-like star. And for the planet uh, F, uh, the or E, the, the distance is something like 5% the distance between the Earth and, uh, and the Sun. So it's much, much uh, closer to its star. NASA deceiving people since 1958. Anybody on here, Rakim knows. He brings me up regularly. I got no problem with that. All right, of course. Let's, 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 let's go on. So, <laughs> so uh, Jorge, Jorge, could you agree with me that air pressure pushes us down? Air pressure yes. pushing yeah, us they, down. Yeah, there's pressing you from all around, yes. All right, so, so now we see that this much it sticks there at the, at the top. Like they're not going down. To me, I don't know, you can speak about this, right? This is a Cartesian I can, I can. Right? This is really cool, but go ahead. I can yeah. speak to it. But now, I want to just back up Fred here that everything finds its equilibrium. If I close this bottle and then put in a bit of pressure, right? You see those much sticks? 
then yes. go down finding the equilibrium if i put just a, a bit of pressure not too much just a little bit they will a bit like levitate in that yes, medium yes. because this, they're trying to find equilibrium this is so, awesome yep this is how um i don't know what the device was but this is a a, a, a a rudimentary way to measure pressure atmospheric pressure and so what you have there is that water is not compressible but the wood and matches are compressible and they have water and a little bit of air trapped in them so when you put your thumb over that thing and you press down you are compressing what's in there but the water can't compress but what does compress is the matchstick and what that causes is a little bit of the air to come out and it causes the matchstick to actually get a little bit smaller which increases its overall density which decreases its buoyant force which causes it to sink uh this is just uh and frederick would agree this is just bernoulli newtonian uh, type physics again. okay all right Fred, so now uh, correct uh, right, 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 right. so it's pretty okay. simple physics uh, knowledge, uh, you so, Jorge, Jorge, are you Jorge, paying attention the, the, you see right, what so, it has nothing to do Jorge. with the fluid statics when you do that because it absolutely does you're changing you're, the compress, the you're compressing the wood water, water's not compressing yeah Jorge, Jorge, it's here's the thing here Oh, hey, here's the thing. Here's friend, the th but I have, it's not yeah. compressible. Not, not like the wood is. You yeah, just no, 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 hey, hey, no, no one, one second, one second. Hey, Greg, do you agree with my description? Uh, one second. Oh, 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 you, you're saying about compression the wood, but now the original where this experiment comes from, right? The Cartesian diver is made that they have to fit in that tube is half water and half air. You're not that there's no compression of water air or air. Air is compressed. Yeah, but no, yeah, but that tube that tube goes down on its own without being compressed because it's sealed. That tube is sealed. The original experiment of this, the original experiment, that tube is sealed. There's no way air is going in or coming out. They are changing the the pressure, the pressure of the water. No, 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 I didn't no, say that one. air was going in or out. Just it's just pressure. If, if it was opposite pressure, right? Say, for instance, for some reason, the bottle was exerting pressure from the inside, and you tried to put your thumb on top of it, it would spray around your, your, your thumb. You're just doing the opposite of that. Yeah. Yep, yeah, but I'm, 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 I'm not changing. with enough pressure. No, it's not. Water yeah. is not. That's how yeah. hydraulics work. Actually, no, no, no. Done. Oh, I look. can show you a no. test. It's you been Fred, Fred, nice what try, is though. more... Fred, I'm going what is more take, compressible, wood, but wood, now, wood, or water? Look that up. What's but funny now, is gravity look, wasn't look, said one Jorge, time. Look, Jorge, I, I, when I did this area on, right, the water was here, and this much sticks, they didn't go down. I had to add in more water, so the much sticks went down. If I remove the water up to here, and I think um, yeah, Starlight asked, asked, asked please, the question please, already. Yeah. Yeah. Starlight asked me a question. Please understand that, that so you, you, you can agree that so you can acknowledge that i'm not compressing the, no, the, no, the, the son, wood son, listen, but listen, it's, it's about the water our, you just hydraulics, proved my point go, hydraulics go no, the, the, the systems we've been using for years we've known about. yeah so the, the air is compressible so if you put too much air in there man when you squeeze your thumb you're just going to compress the air you got to have a little bit amount of air because the air and the matchsticks will all compress and it is when you compress the matchsticks that you get a difference in your buoyant force because of the change in density of the matchstick. And so the water's not going to compress, Fred. I know that you're saying water's compressible at some pressures, but I would ask you to look at the difference between incompressibility but, of water and wet wood. But now, but now, it's more why would the plastic but water sell? is also compressible. So we can agree yeah. on that. Yeah, but you, because you the, the, the original experiment, it's the just plastic. So there's no water, there's no air going in the plastic or water coming out from the plastic. The original Cartesian, the Cartesian diver, right, is sealed, like completely sealed. Son, did, did you did you understand my, were, are you okay with my explanation? I don't have to say you have to agree with it, but did you understand what I was saying about the compression and the buoyant force? But then, but then, you know, Jorge, not even only that, if they were to compress a liquid at all, it would heat it up. And then the liquid would go to a gaseous form after it got hotter. So, and there's a whole, yeah, there's a whole oh, relationship between the BS. pressure and, and the, and the that's temperature. That's BS. I can show you a test where he puts two 20,000 pounds into it and compresses water. All right. Yeah. It doesn't now, blow right. up. It doesn't burn. Okay. I have, I'll, I'll do this with, oh, okay. What what about the egg in, 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 in salt water and non-salt water? Why does, would it be the same? 
eggs, uh, egg. principle that Omelet, the egg yeah. in, a, in, 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 in soap water, they float and not in soap water, they sink. It's not, it's, is it not same, the same Same principle? thing. Like, it's the same. Almost everything that you're going to put in there is going to be more compressible than the water. I mean, you can put some steel chunks in there. Um, but if uh, they're going to sink to the bottom, and if you make little shells out of them, though, now you give them like a limited tensile strength, and they will compress because me metal is uh, deformable. Water's pretty incompressible, y'all. Fred, I agree with you. Like in theory, you can compress water, and you can get all kinds of actually different states of water by compressing it sufficiently. Uh, but we're not at that regime right now. With the pressures he's putting on it, the water's not compressing, but the matchstick is, and it's just changing the density of that matchstick, so it's making it more dense, so it sinks. At some point, it's more dense than the water, and it sinks, man. That's just like, but I think you do realize this is how submarines he's operate. He's not right? compressing the woods. Sticks, no. He's compressing the air oh above God. it and changing the water pressure. <laughs> the, when he changes Match the pressure, aren't compressing. They are. Nice try, though. No, they, they are changing volume. No, they're not. They you are. can't prove that. Yeah. So, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. And the air, either the air is getting squeezed out of them because the, the matchsticks have air. The air increase. The pressure of the air increase mm -mm. changes the equilibrium. Oh, okay. I'll try this That's in, right in a part. He's, That's he's the changing basics. the density. When he if presses you down under the, everything. Understand, he didn't change the density. He changed the pressure in the no. bottle. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. That's but that changed the density exactly. of the matchstick. You're just trying. Now it didn't change the matchsticks at all. It so didn't hey, change the density. Right. No, you it can't did. prove wait, that. Wait, 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 you wait, have wait. to physically test it. Jorge, Jorge, wait, wait, wait. I want to hear you say something. He proved it, Fred. He proved it. Fred, explain to me how you think submarines were. Hydrostatics is a branch of fluid mechanics, which is a branch of physics, which explains yeah. the atmospheric pressure and the ocean pressure. That's what he's doing in the bottle is a demonstration of pressure changes. He's not pressing the wood. He's compressing the air and changing the pressure in the bottle. Okay, goes back that's to my it. original question. How do you Your think question, submarines work? Because that still did not answer. Uh, my I know how submarines work. What <laughs> does that have to do with what we're Explain talking about? To me, because you said they you fill said tanks that's exactly and, how submarines they fill tanks work with air and change the buoyancy. Okay, exactly the same thing as we're demonstrating here. That is not here. what's happening here. That is exactly what's happening <laughs> here. You're changing the yep. outside pressure. That's right. Which, That's right. Which okay. once they do the same thing in this change, you can still fluid mechanics. Don't same thing. You see? No, now you see this. Right. They're changing okay. the buoyancy by yes. filling air yes. by emptying this, them. Hold on, Fred. Even okay, better. Okay. This is awesome. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. but now you see this is the plastic bottle. I'm yep. pressing now the plastic bottle. Same thing. Now You're there is the no air that I'm... Yeah, I'm it's not, the pressure of the water. I'm changing the pressure. He's not pressing the right. objects inside. Wait, wait. He's changing I'm the not, pressure. You are removing, exactly. You're, exactly. You're removing volume from the bottle by doing that. You're, you, did not you, removing volume. There's a lid on it. There's no, a lid. From the, the movable space he's of the water. Changing the pressure. Learn basic physics. Increasing pressure. Fluid mechanics. Which is increasing no. statics. And you see this one? You see this? It's you. gone all down. I yeah. didn't change it. I didn't touch it. I didn't change it. It's still closed. But you see, it just went down on its own. Yeah. Are you forcing but, water into the matches, though? Yeah. So, so that one probably has is completely saturated with water. Yeah. And, and so oh, I can agree. With gonna, yeah. You can so, do yeah. it with ob other objects, not just matches. Yeah. You can. yeah exactly. Exactly. They just have to yeah. be more compressible than the water, Frederick. No, they, they don't. Have to have a You're changing the pressure around it. You, you what, can do it with what, plastic. How do you think hydraulics okay. work? So, Frederick, you're telling yep. me hydraulics are fake work? science. If you have a submarine saying, and there, you take it down hydraulics. to 100 feet depth, and so, then you increase dude, the yeah. pressure outside that submarine, the submarine will rise up. They're literally denying Simple. hydraulics right now. They are literally me. denying hydraulics. Like, yeah. everybody no, that we're actually proving works hydraulics. on hydraulics. <laughs> we are denying gravity. gravity. We're proving we gravity. So, so anybody out there that's ever worked on a hydraulic system, Frederick is saying... Yeah, we're proving it. We're proving it. Gravity. You just don't know what you're talking about. You're denying it. We're it came in the mail, and y'all are opening it with me. <laughs> Ooh. Here we go. The flat earth map dates back over 1000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer. His name was Al-Biruni and he lived between 973 AD to 1048 AD. 
It's the official map of the United Nations and also the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitry from Russia with suggestions of mine, Idia Lenkar. Known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Benjo, I asked Dmitry to include the Bermuda Triangle and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tazi, a professional mapmaker came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my online store now, and order one of the items, I humbly thank you.